Hey guys, this is a review of UFC 157, Rousey versus Kamusha. It was a really good fight card. Um, I really enjoyed it. Obviously, I really enjoyed the main event. Um, it just wasn't, you know, quote unquote, an arm bar. There's some exciting points in there. Um, but let's first start off with the with the with this card here. Um, Robbie Lawler versus Josh Koscheck. <clears throat> well, this one was, uh, you know, I expected this to go completely different. I expected, you know, Josh Koscheck to go in there and use his wrestling to control Robbie Lawler and his and his striking ability, but that didn't happen. Um, he actually ended up getting caught on the ground and got grounded, pounded in the first round, 357. Uh, that's Josh Koscheck I'm talking about got caught. So Robbie Lawler wins this one by TKO. Hopefully Josh Koscheck doesn't get cut. I doubt it, but you never know. You know, UFC is trying to trim, trim the the roster of fighters here. Then we have Court McGee versus Josh Near. Um, you know, this was pretty much uh, Court McGee. You know, just imposing his will. Even though Josh Near at, at a couple of points looked like he was coming back. Um, Court McGee pretty much, you know, was able to, especially that first round, he just laid laid on him with a couple of, with a kick to the body also, and to, uh, and it looked like he, it was, I think it was a left hook to the body that he ended up catching him with in the liver, and he went down, and but he didn't get a chance to finish him off, and then that's when Josh Nair started to pick up a little pace, but... Uh, Court McGee really did his thing in this one and uh, put this the, that ma that match to bed. So we have uh, Court McGee winning by unanimous decision. Then we have your I favor versus um, uh, Minajar. Well, you know this one was a pretty quick fight. It in the first round, 434. Your I favor went in there and you know did his thing. He pretty much uh, went in there, got 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 a hold of um, Minajar's back and ended up getting in a crucifix. I think I think it was a standing crucifix and then moving around into a rear naked, which is amazing um, at this level, but it would just really show what um, Faber can do when he's, you know, um, when he's having a really good night. I just really like to see that type of action from him once it gets to that championship level. But he really showed, um, had a good night uh, for, uh, for a submission. I think he got submission of the night. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure though, but uh, rear naked choke, he wins by first round, um, 434. Then we have Leota Machida versus Dan Henderson. Um, this fight here was... What I expected to be, it, it was, you know, a guy who's going to come at you versus a guy who's a counter puncher, and that was that's what happened pretty much. Um, you know, in this in this bout, I think the only chance Dan Henderson had at winning uh, was when he accidentally took down um, Machida. That's because Machida slipped and he fell on top of him. But other than that, Dan Henderson was chasing Machida around the whole time. Throwing punches, getting caught with with front can, um, crane kicks, and he just get kept getting front kicked to death. Um, I think it was like three or four front kicks, but that says a lot about Dan Henderson's jaw. I mean, this man could take a kick. He got punched. There was a bunch of combinations in there that um, would have knocked most people out, but Dan Henderson just kept on chugging, kept on moving forward. Wanted to get into that brawl situation, but um, Machida wasn't having it. I don't know why the crowd was booing so much in this match, because I really enjoyed it. If you're, you know, if you really are involved into MMA, if you practice it, or if you're just really involved in MMA, you understand how hard it is to counter off of somebody throwing punches and the move like that. And you have to really appreciate these guys, especially at this level. Um, so I really enjoyed seeing the movement by um, Machida and his his counter ability. It was just really amazing for me to watch. But um, Le Le Cho um, Machido ends up winning this fight by split decision, which I don't even see how he didn't get a unanimous. But for some reason, he got a split decision. 
either way, he wins this one and um, will challenge the winner of the John Jones or Shell Sonnen fight. Uh, and then we have uh, Ronda Rousey versus Liz Camouche. Man, was this... I mean, just the anticipation going into this fight was just had to build all the way up. I mean, the media attention, the advertisements up to it, and it was well deserved. I mean, you have to give it to, to Liz. She went in there and she really showed some holes in um, in, in, Ronda, in Rousey's game. I mean, this is probably the second or third time someone's got uh, Rousey's back, and they just weren't able to finish her. But that says a lot about Ronda too, that she just doesn't let someone finish her and she can actually, um, you know, survive someone trying to crank your face. Because if you've seen that picture where, um, or if you watch the fight where you see where she's just getting her face cranked, and I think Liz even showed on Twitter where she had like teeth marks, but from pressing up against her teeth, she was gonna try to knock her teeth out with the, with the, with the actual choke itself. She was first. She first tried to go for a choke, but her chin was down. So then she put it across her face and tried to squeeze that until um, she gave up, and then twisted to do a neck crank too. But that she wasn't able to finish there. So Ronda ended up sliding out, and man, that beautiful um, arm bar that she did. I mean, Liz tried to get out, but she rolled her, rolled again. And then she had a hard time pulling it because she had a grip like this. Um, and if you practice jiu-jitsu or anything like that, you know that, you know, when there's multiple ways that you can try to break this grip, but at the time she, um, couldn't do it, so she actually ended up, she ended up actually repositioning herself and getting a bigger grip on the arm so that she could put, so it could be, um, body against arm. And we all know your body, the whole, your whole body is definitely stronger than the whole arm. And that's exactly what she did. She actually, instead of pulling like this, guys, she actually put it up against her chest and pulled all the way back with the arm and broke it apart. And it looked like when she did it, it actually popped her, her arm anyway. And then she went to submission. But maybe it just hyperextended and then the real pain came in when she extended it. I mean, she could have almost broke it, it looks like, if she would have um, extended it any further. But you have to give it to Ronda Rousey. She's either tap or snap. I mean, there's no give she give in there. I mean, you're either going to tap or she's going to break your arm. And she goes on to be 7-0, guys. So um, I think... I don't know, I think it's either going to be Misha Tate or some cat, cat, I forgot her dad's, her last name, cat something. She's huge, guys. I mean, she has like, she has traps and shoulders like um, Phil Davis. Uh, I don't know if you see him, look, he kind of looks like a uh, Phil Davis. Like sometimes when you see him like posing and whatnot, he looks like an action figure. Well, that's how this cat girl looks. She looks like an action figure. She looks like... Her shoulders are huge and traps and her arms. But anyway, um, that was the fight, man. I really enjoyed it. Tell me what you guys thought. Did you guys think it was an interesting fight? Are you guys glad to see the women in there um, doing their thing? Um, as normal, guys, please rate, comment, subscribe. It really helps my channel out. And I'll see you guys in the um, prediction video. Peace.